By the end of this video, you'll understand an incredible set of features of how to do arrays within Blender. Not just using the array modifier, but using instancing, using curves, using vertices, you name it, we're going to cover it. What's up? I'm Jonathan and welcome to Maker Tales, where I'm sharing my maker journey to help you go further in yours. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell icon to never miss an opportunity to keep making. This video is all about the array modifier and things that are very similar to the array modifier as well as how the array modifier works with other modifiers. It's a very intensive video this one. It's going to be a little bit longer and a little bit more complicated. Be sure that you've watched the first video before you jump into this one and probably best understand the entire course before jumping into this because we're going in deep. Starting from a fresh Blender file, let's go ahead, select everything and delete it because we're about to do a really deep dive into the array modifier and things that are very close to the array modifier. Remember that if you haven't gone and seen the first video, I really suggest you go and do that first. So I'm going to bring in a cube here. We're going to make it quite small. I'm going to go with 0.5 millimeters. And now let's go and do the simplest thing out there, which is an array modifier with a constant offset of one millimeter and let's set this to 10. So we now know exactly what's going on when we do that. Now let's go ahead and let's add another modifier to it. I'm gonna add another array modifier and this time I'm gonna do a constant offset on the Y by one. I'm gonna remove this one to zero and as you can see, as easy as that, we now have a 10 by 10 array. Now the key thing here is this is all controlled by this one cube right here. So if we go ahead and we edit this one cube, well, that's going to go ahead and edit all of them. Now, if we wanted to have mesh here that we wanted to edit, we would have to apply both of these arrays. So then we would be able to go ahead and manipulate these cubes. Of course, if you just apply one of these, that means you will have 10 cubes, which are then being arrayed 10 times that way. So you have 10 different ways of editing it. Of course, the key thing here is this is perfect distances from each other. So no matter what, you cannot go ahead and edit this. Now, I would be wrong to tell you that this is the only way to do this because it isn't. And let's go and cover that right now. So the other way of doing this is by something called instancing. Now, I did mention instancing in the last video, and I might have led you a little bit astray here because these are not instances. Yes, they are technically, but no at the same time, because instances in Blender don't really have real mesh. And as you can see here in our scene statistics, we have a whole bunch of vertices, faces, edges. So this here is technically all real mesh, because if we delete one of these arrays, you can see the numbers go all the way down because this is all coming from one object. Right, so let's talk about instances now. I'm just gonna get this cube, gonna bring this up a little bit on the Z, and then we're gonna bring in a plane. I'm gonna make this plane 10 millimeters, and then I'm gonna take this plane into edit mode, and we're gonna right click and subdivide it by nine. This number is very important because you will understand in the future why it's so important, but for right this minute, just take a look. We now have 10 faces by 10 faces. Right, let's go back into object mode. Now we need to make this cube a child of the plane. So get the child, take it to the parent, then we're going to go control P, set parent to object, done. Let's select our plane and go into the object properties here. And now you can see there's the instancing menu. Let's just quickly read what happens here on the faces. If not none, object instancing method to use faces, instant child objects on all faces. Having read that and knowing that we have a 10 by 10 faces on this plane, you can imagine exactly what's about to happen. We click this and there you have it. We have now instanced our cube all over this. Of course, you still have this cube right here. Well, you can just go and find it within here and go ahead and hide it. You don't need to have it up anyway. So with that there, let's talk about the power of this. We still have the ability to edit that cube and we can still edit all the cubes all together. Not only that, we also have this plane. So if we edit this plane, and let's just select a face here and bring this up, you can see that it's also arrayed along 3D geometry. Okay, fantastic. Now I don't really use it with faces, I use it with vertices. 
So let's go ahead, turn on vertices. This will now turn into an 11 by 11. This is why that number is so important. So if we really wanted to, we should have done this by a subdivision of eight, and then we would have got a 10 by 10. But anyway, with that, we can now go ahead and let's select an edge. Let's go with this edge right here. Select that entire edge, and now we can just move that edge, and there we have it. We can now do so much more precise instancing if we really wanted to, and we can affect our array however we're wanting. Okay, let's say for whatever reason, um, this back here is exactly what you're wanting. You know that this is not real mesh because our vertices, edges, and faces have not gone up, and that means we can't really use it for much. So how do we turn this into real mesh to be able to truly use it once again? Well, we have to apply reality to it. Yes, I'm trying to get you to take a look at the apply menu where we apply our scale. Make sure you have your plane selected and you will see right here, make instances real. So we click this and now all of a sudden we have a whole bunch of origin points everywhere. But have you noticed something a little bit strange? Our vertices and edges have not gone up. Now, I think this is a little bug, but for now, best way to fix this is select one of these cubes, join it all together into that there, and then we can go back into edit mode, go P, part by loose parts, then we go back here, and then just go right click, set origin point, origin to geometry, and there you have it. You can see we now have a whole bunch of vertices and edges all over the place. Down here, we have our plane and our cube ready to go once again, but all this here is now real mesh to play about with. And that is instancing in a nutshell. There is so much more to instancing and we will be using it even more in this video. Now let's go ahead and tackle the next part. To start off with, we need to introduce the curve modifier to you. So we're gonna bring in a mesh, a cube here, we're gonna take this into edit mode. I wanna scale it on the X sum, and there we go. So we have that like that. Now I'm just gonna move this down on the Y a little bit, and we're also going to bring in a Bezier curve. I'm gonna scale it by the radius right here, because if you scale it normally, and even if you apply the scale, right here on these points, if we go into our menu here, this needs to be one, one. And even if you apply the scale, they don't go back to one, one in my experience. So let's go ahead and do this curve modifier. Now the curve modifier basically deforms mesh. So I'm going to select this here. I'm going to go add a modifier. We're going to go for a curve which modifier along which axis, we're doing it on the X axis, the red axis, and we're gonna go, okay, great, pick this curve right there. Now, what on earth has just happened? You can see it just looks like it's made a big mess. What, why? It's okay. It means that the origin points aren't working in relationship to another. We know how important these points are. So let's go ahead and fix that right now. I'm going to go right here. We're going to go to our tools, origin points. So we're moving our origin points. So with this one, it's a nice and easy one. We're just going to do a snap vertex, bring the 3D cursor over here, and we're just going to set the origin point to the 3D cursor. Okay, that's a good start. Now I'm going to turn off the visibility of the curve modifier on this. We're going to select the origin point of here. We're going to go with our CAD transforms, go G space O so we can snap to our origin point, space to clear, shift F for face center. I want to say the face center of this here because we want this entire X axis to be affected by that. Okay, let's turn off our origin only. Let's turn our curve back on. But hey, this still looks like a mess. What's going on here? Well, we need to bring this up to there. It needs to be in the same spot as well. Okay, so we'll bring that to there. We'll go origin. Well, sorry, 3D cursor, selected to cursor. Oh, make sure it's selected. There we go, selected to cursor. Right, this still is not working how we're wanting. Why is that? 
Well, we're deforming here, and edges are needed for deforming. So let's go into edit mode, and let's just go and give this a whole bunch of loop cuts. And now when we take this into object mode, you will see that we have gone ahead and deformed our cube to that right there. I hope that makes sense because that's as simple as I can make it. I know it's incredibly complicated, and at the end of the day, this is the only way that it works. You need to have this all working together. The key thing here is origin points must match. And then you must give this enough information. Now, before we go further with the whole idea of arrays and all the rest, let's say you wanted to create some sort of pipes or ducting or something like that. Doing this is not the way to do it. Curves have this built into them. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off this curve. We're going to get this cube once again. I'm going to select this face right here. I'm going to go ahead and part this selection, delete what we don't need, which is that right there. And now right here, we have this face. Now with this face, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go into edit mode, select this face and I'm going to go and delete only the face. So we're left with this edges. Why am I doing this? Because this lets us turn this into a curve. This is important because you can only do this with a curve. So I'm going to bring that curve back over there. So we're going to bring our selection to the cursor. Great. Now we're going to select our Bezier curve right here and go into the options of the Bezier curve. Now within the options of this, you can go all the way down to geometry. Now you might think, okay, great. This is everything I need. So we increase the depth and you can see it creates a pipe. Fantastic. As you can imagine, there's resolution. So if you want to make this however you're wanting, it's right there. But here's the important part. There is a profile and an object. So profile is a little bit weird. You can go ahead and play with this however you're wanting to play with it. I don't find that it's that great. It's great for some molding, but not what I'm wanting. I want an object. I'm going to select this object here. Okay, what's just happened? Why is that going so weird and in this way? This is because the orientation of our mesh is wrong. If we go into here and then we take this into edit mode and we rotate this on the Y, you will see that once we hit 90, we have our duct right there. Now, of course, right this minute, it's shaded flat. Now we can go ahead, right click and say shade flat. Sorry, I meant to say shade smooth. We got to go and shade it flat. And there you have your ducting. Now, the great thing about doing it this way is that you still have your curve here to edit. So if you wanted, you can go ahead, extrude this out. You can see it's a very powerful way of creating things like this. And if you're wanting, you can go ahead and let's increase the resolution now. So we're going to go over to our curve properties, shape, resolution, increase this all the way up. You can get crazy with this. Okay, so now let's talk about arrays because this is very similar to array. You're basically arraying this shape along here and joining it all up. That's what we've basically just learned. But how do we go about and do this with an object? And instead of a curve and extruding along a curve, we want objects along a curve. Well, that can be done. So let's delete everything. Let's take our 3D cursor back to the world origin. And we're going to start right from the beginning here, which is let's bring in a single vertex. So we bring in a single vertex. We're going to go into our vertex selection, go to the top view, and we're going to extrude this on the Y by five. Great. Extrude this on the X by five. Great. And extrude this just a little bit out in this weird direction that way. Why am I doing this? Because I'm creating our curve. So let's go ahead. We have this selected let's go object convert to curve great you can take this into edit mode you can see we have a nice polydyne curve you know what this one 
I don't really want a polyline curve. I want this to be a little bit different. So I'm going to select it all. I'm going to go right click. We're going to set spline type to Bezier. And then I'm going to select this handle here. I'm going to go G, Y, bring that so we have a nice little weird little curvy bit right there. That's exactly what I'm wanting. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's array some cubes. So let's bring in some mesh. Let's go for a cube. Let's make this nice and small, 0 0.5. Great. Okay, so key things to note right this minute. Our origin points are exactly in the same spot. That is so incredibly important. So let's go ahead and let's array our cube first. So let's go into our modifiers, add an array, array. We're going to go with a constant offset and be sure that you know what's going on here. I'm going to go and set this to a constant offset on the Z by one millimeter. Now, what I'm also going to say is the length of it, I want it to be as long as this curve. Okay, so that's the length up, done. But it's still not going along the curve. Well, we now just learnt how to curve mesh. And believe it or not, right this, this modifier is seen as a mesh by modifiers. So that means if we were to apply our curve and we say deform axis on the Z because that is the way that we are arraying and then we set this curve, we have now just arrayed along a curve and that's it. Now, yes, you can see the problems instantly right here. This is a deform modifier. It is going to deform whatever mesh it's on it. So as you can see, our mesh has gone all sorts of wacky here, and it's definitely not precision modeling to the slightest. But there's a few things that we can do. So first of all, we can edit our entire curve, select it all, and we can turn this into a free, which all of a sudden, now you can see that it's a lot more snappy and it's only right on the corners that things are going weird. We can give it some more resolution. So I'm going to select everything. We're going to go here, set this resolution 0 0.24 or 0 0.24. And there we go. Now it's as sharp as it can be, but it's still not perfect. This is not exactly what I'm wanting. Now, the key thing that I do want to do here is we're going to go and do a little bit of advanced material stuff because I want you to be able to see what's happening. We're going to go into our edit mode right this minute. We're going to go into our face selection and select this face right here. We're then going to go into our meshes. We're going to add a material and we're going to add another material. Now we're going to click a new material. We're going to make this material red and this material, we're assigning it to that face. Now, why am I doing this? So that we can go into our material preview mode and you can see where that face is in relation to our cube. So you can see it is on the outside. So it's gone ahead and done some weird stuff there. So let's go ahead. We can grab this. We can take this into edit mode. And hey, I want to be able to see what's going on. Like, why is this going in that direction and all the rest is I can't really understand what's happening. Well, in our modifiers, you can turn this on in edit mode too. And there you go. Now you're seeing it in edit mode as well. So we can select everything that we have here. And we can go ahead and rotate it on our Y. And you can see as we rotate it on our Y, we can go ahead and set this by 180. And there we go. That's all our faces now facing the same way that we wanted them to be in the first place. Okay, great. But Jonathan, this is still not workable for me. I'm talking about precision. I wanted a cube right there. Why can't I have a cube right there? Okay, let's go into the next step of this. To fix this issue, we're basically going to be using instancing to help us. So let's go ahead. Let's click our cube here. Let's turn off our curve, our array. So we have just 
our object right here along with this curve right there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go back into this view here and I'm just going to bring this up a little bit. There we go, like that. Yes, I know it's not ideal, but you'll see in a moment why I'm doing this. We're going to bring in a plane. We're going to make this plane 0.5. It doesn't really matter what size it is. You can imagine what's about to happen. Keynote, this plane is one face. That's it, nothing else to it. So we have this one face. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to array this plane on the constant of Z by one, the exact same setup as we just had. We're going to go with a fit length of the curve of this one right here. Great, great, that's perfect. And then I'm going to go ahead and we're going to add a curve on the Z of this curve. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now you can see, no matter what, if you are perfectly on the corner here, you are going to get this angle. So if we were to go ahead here into our arrays and just set this to 0 0.99, you can see we are right there. Like there's nothing we can actually do. So we have this back to one, doesn't work. 0 0.9999999. It's just not going to happen. This is as close as you can get it. That is just the way the cookie crumbles when it comes to curves. And to be honest, when it comes to arraying along a curve, you're usually not going to need more precision than this because whatever you're arraying that is right on the corner of something, you're wanting something pretty sharp. And that's what's happening right here. It's something very sharp. So if you're perfectly on the corner and you're trying to place something, this is not the way you want to do it. I will show you a different way though. Anyway, so with that said, we now know that if we go ahead and select this cube, then we select here, so the child to the parent, we're going to parent it now, and you've got this, we're going to select this plane, object properties, faces, instancing, there we go. We have now just gone ahead and instanced this. We can also go into our shaded view, and you can see that our instances are as so. Now we can see that our object is right there. We can actually go into that plane, hide that cube, and there is our object now arrayed. Again, all the same applies to instancing and all the rest that you want to do there. You can go ahead and edit this however you're wanting. So let's go into the next part of this. As you can imagine, we're working with instancing here. So if we grab this, we could go ahead and set vertex but this is going to give us a four by four. This isn't what we're wanting in the slightest. Okay, well, how else can we do this? Well, the simplest way is right this minute, we have this plane here. We could go ahead and create a single vertex and array a single vertex. But for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just gonna go ahead, we're gonna go into edit mode. I'm gonna go M and we're gonna merge at center, which gives us a single vertex right there in the center. And now when we go back out, you can see that we have all of these vertices arrayed along this. Now, why is this so important? Well, let's think this through. What does a vertex have? A point position in space. What does a face have? Well, it has lots of vertices, a point position in space, and a rotation and a normal. So a whole bunch more information. So this basically means if we were to instance of a vertex, there isn't the rest of the information, is there? There will only be this cube, this vertex, and an array. So let's do exactly that. Let's array that along vertices. And you can see that it's gone ahead and arrayed without rotating your object at all. That is how you do a non-rotation-based array of an object. Okay, now with that done, let's talk about, well, being perpendicular to a surface and the rotation of curves.
All right, let's go back to basics here. I'm going to select everything, delete it, and we're going to create ourselves just a Bezier curve. We have this Bezier curve right here. I'm going to make this a uh, seven so it's nice and big. I'm also going to go ahead and create ourselves a cone this time. So we're going to go with a cone. I'm going to go with a 3D cursor changing here because I want to do a little bit of editing to this so it's more visually appealing. I'm just going to scale it this way. I'm going to deselect this top and I'm going to scale that down so it's more of a, a sharp point like this. All right, now we're snapping already so I'm going to go and snap all of our origin points and everything to the beginning of this. So let's go and do that. We have our, that selected, brilliant. Selection to the cursor, great. This origin point, I'm going to set the origin to the 3D cursor. So both the origin points and everything is right there. We should now be familiar on how to go ahead and array this along this curve. Once again, you select your mesh. You're going to go and we're going to add a modifier, an array. I'm not going to do it on the Z this time. I'm going to do it on the X. So we're going to constrain, constant offset. I'm going to set this to a 0 0.5. I'm going to do a constant offset of a fit length curve of this curve right there. So it's a nice long array like that. Perfect. Right. Now I'm going to go ahead and deform it. We're going to add a curve deformation modifier. Keep it on the X. And we're going to say this curve here. Great. So that's that. Now we're now set up to talk about curve normals. What? Yes. Curves, these lovely little things, take it into edit mode, go into our overlay, and you will see normals. Let's turn the normals on, let's increase these handles, and you'll see that all these little arrows come out. These arrows are the normals of the curve. So if we select one of these object points here, and we go ahead and start playing around with this handle here. You can see how the normals move with the curve. Not only that, the normals also increase in density as you increase the resolution. And on top of that, they have a rotation as well. Every single point, if you go into our item, you can see we have a radius and a weight and a tilt. What on earth is this? Let's go ahead and play with the numbers. So this doesn't do anything right this minute. Well, it's not really going to happen until you deal with soft bodies, but it does work with radius. So you can thin down, thicken up. It's all right there. Or we have this tilt. So we can tilt our curve. So we can go ahead and give this a lovely 180 tilt. And you can see now all the normals, how they're changing by 180 degrees along the curve because every single control point has its own tilt amount. All right, so now with that explained, let's talk about the issue that we have when we go ahead and create a curve from mesh. So once again, let's go and bring our 3D cursor to the world origin and let's create ourselves a UV sphere this time. So we have this UV sphere. I'm going to go back into our solid mode so we can see this a little bit clearer. Great. So we're going to go and make this a little bit bigger, I think, because if not, we're just going to be stumbling all over the place. Great. Nice and big. Now we're going to take this into edit mode. I'm going to select some random vertices here. Select this. Select that path there. Select this path here. That down there. Over here. And we'll go back to that. Okay, great. We have an edge all the way around that we're wanting to curve in some way. Now, this here isn't going to work for us. So let's go ahead. Let's go back into here. Let's deselect that right there. So there we go. That's a nice curve that we could array along. Okay, so how would we do this? Well, we know how we would do this. We would do a Shift D to duplicate it. Then we would go a P, part the selection, separate the selection. And now we have this edge that is just here floating about. Let's go ahead and convert this into a curve. Right, now we've just learned about normals. Let's go take a look at what's just happened to the normals of this. So let's go here, 
Let's take this into edit mode. All right. So the normals are going into the mesh. That, that doesn't quite look right, does it? Let's take a look at what would happen if we tried to array along this. So if we do a snapping right there, we need to, first of all, set the origin point to the 3D cursor. Let's go ahead, let's create ourselves a cone once again. I'm just going to quickly scale this just a little bit. So, hey, you, scaling you, scale down like so. Let's go uh, scale Z so you're nice and pointy, great. So we have this pointy point and we're wanting to array this along the curve. Let's go ahead and do that once again. Remember, we now know the process of this. We're gonna grab this. We're gonna set an array. We're going to array it along whatever distance we're wanting. So I'm gonna array this every 0 0.5 and let's set it to the length of the curve that we have here. Fantastic. And now, with that done, we're going to deform it. Now, keep in mind, we're going on the X here. So we're going to go ahead and now add a curve, deforming on the X. Yep. Which curve? This curve. There we go. Oh, wow. That is a mess, isn't it? Well, yeah, it's a mess. But you've, you've already shown me, Jonathan. You can just go ahead. We can select our object. We can go into edit mode. We can go here like that. And then we can start playing around with a rotation. Okay, let's go and do that. Rotate. Okay, let's go rotate this on the Y a bit. Okay, that's that's not quite what I'm wanting. Maybe it's on the X. There we go. I'll rotate that on the X. That's looking more perpendicular, right? That, that should work great, but it's perpendicular at this point, but it's not perpendicular on that point. And what's happening to the whole scale of things? Things are just going... So, you can see just the problems that were happening here. It's just not quite right. And that's all got to do with the normals of our curve here being into the mesh. So to fix this, there isn't a way to fix this. You could go in manually to every single one of these points and then just take a look, go for a tilt, tilt this the way that you think it should be tilted and then go to the next and the next and the next. Yes, it is a real pain. Now, there is a fix for this. I've gone ahead and we've created an add-on called Perpendicular Curve. This add-on is completely and utterly inspired by a great add-on called Curve Array Pro. Unfortunately, it's a pay-for add-on, which is 15 pounds, and we're all about basically open source here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you what we have going on right here. So we're gonna select our curves once again that we're wanting. So select this here. We're gonna create a weird one going down that way. We're gonna go all the way down here. Then we'll go back up there, along, down, and select up back to there. And we'll deselect those because that's not how a curve is gonna work. So with that all selected, you install the add-on. The add-on is linked down in the description and then you click this one button, curve from edges. We click that and that is the curve created. Now, what exactly has this done? We're going to select this curve and take it into edit mode. You can see now that all of the normals of the curve have been averaged to the faces that they connect to. So it's as perpendicular as you're going to get with a curve. I'm not saying it's perfect precision perpendicular because it's taking all the faces that are connected to it and basically averaging it. So this is sort of the best you're gonna get at the moment. I have a feeling that the developer of the Curve Array Pro add-on is planning on making this. Um, he has a thing called Magic Curve and he's wanting to making that free at some point, but he doesn't feel comfortable doing it just yet. So I've gone ahead and created this in the meantime. So let's go ahead, let's set our origin point to the 3D cursor once again, and then let's create ourselves our cones once again. So I'll take this into edit mode, scale it down. Then I'm gonna scale it on the Z up a bit. There we go, we have our cones now. Again, we know the setup of this, exactly how it should go now. So we're gonna go and array. We're arraying this with a constant offset on the X by 0.5 for me. And then I'm doing this by a length of the curve of our perpendicular curve right here. 
And then with that, we're now going to go ahead and add a curve modifier on the X of the perpendicular curve. And there you have it simplified as quick as possible. Of course, you can see there's still little problems. We can go into our curve itself, select the whole curve, turn this into some free handle curves. Let's go and do that. So V, so free, there we go. They're now free handle. We can also go here, make sure that everything has a mean tilt, well, not a mean tilt, a mean weight of one, great. And there we go, it's just sort of going crazy with it seeing how you're wanting it. I found that the best results usually for the curves is if we set this all the way down to one, because then it's very much a set angle that has on all of these. So there we go, that's that. Now, as you can see, we are deforming. So how do we go about in fixing this deform? You should know this by now. We're gonna be talking about instancing for that. So if we undo to the point that we have just our cone once again, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to create our plane. So our plane is there. So let's go and do this once again. Add an array. We're going to array it this time on the X. So we're going to go here. Array. Sorry, on the Z I meant, not on the X. Because we have to make this nice and flat and straight. So we have this now on the Z. Great. That's that there. We're going to do this by the fit curve length of the perpendicular curve. And then we're going to go ahead and curve deform this along the Z because we've done an array along the Z of this curve. Great. So that's gone all the way around there. That's looking good, except this doesn't look quite right. Let's go and fix that quickly. So we're going to go here, select everything, go V, say free. There we go. Now we have a whole bunch of free curves everywhere. As you can see, it's gone and done that quite nicely. I'm just going to set the resolution all the way down to one. That's probably not what I want to. Let's go 1200 and just give it to me as flat as possible. There we go. So with that done, we now know that the plane, the original plane, not the arrayed plane, is right there. So we're going to go ahead and select that. We're going to parent it. So object parenting. Then we're going to select the plane once again. We're going to go to the object properties of it and we're going to do a face instancing and this isn't quite right but as you can see it is right it's just going along it the wrong way because we've gone ahead and done this all through the z and the z is what's being arrayed this way so technically it's doing this correctly all we have to do is go into edit mode and we just have to do a little rotation on our x to by 90 degrees exactly in the right direction and there we have it now we have this perpendicularly arrayed as best as we can do it right this minute i'm not going to say this is precision perfect but it's damn sight a lot better than what we've got right this minute and there you go that's how we're going to do some perpendicular arrays along mesh Lastly, let's go ahead and recover radial arrays because I don't think I made a very good example of showing you just quite how powerful they are. So I'm going to delete everything. We're going to move our 3D cursor to the world origin and then let's bring in a cylinder. Great, cylinder. So we have 32 vertices here. Key thing here is to make sure that this can be divided by four. As you can see, it can because every single one of these axes goes perfectly through an edge right there. Okay, now I'm going to take this into edit mode and we're going to cut this up so we get a wedge. So I'm going to select these two, go with the J, and then I'm going to select those two and go with the J. I'm going to do the same on the other side as well. So these two right there, go with the J, and these two right here, that one right there, and that there, and go with the J. Now I've created all these faces, so I can select that face, that face, that face, invert my selection, go delete and say faces. So we have this wedge here and that perfect origin point in the middle there. Great, so that's not quite where I want it though. I wanna bring our origin point up to this point there. So let's go ahead, let's go right click, set origin point to 3D cursor. And now because we're about to do a radial array, we know that we need an empty. So I'm gonna go ahead, bring in an empty. Great, that's exactly what I want. Now let's go and do our modifier, add an array. We're not doing it by a relative offset. We're going by an object offset of our empty. Great. 
So now we know both of our origin points are right at that point, and we know that we have 32 of these. So what would it be? Well, we have this Z here that we can rotate. Now, how much do we need to rotate this? Well, what would that be? That would be 360 divided by 32, because remember, one of these faces counts as one of the sort of wedges. So with that done, we can now go back into our object here and set this to 32. Now, if you're not sure, you can always go back one and you can see that it opens up. Okay, 32, and make sure that we merge this because that's basically what we're wanting to happen. Now, why have I gone ahead and shown you this? Well, the reason why is we can now go into edit mode. We have this right here, so we can give it, I don't know, a loop cut, do something like that. We can go to a face selection. We can extrude this face, and then we could extrude it once again, grab this and extrude this up. Fantastic. Look at that. Something that complicated made so quickly. But let's say that we wanted there to be a space between every other one. How would we do that? Well, let's just undo that quickly. It's actually pretty simple. What we're basically wanting to do there, oops, I've gone ahead and turned all that on. There we go. And um, what we're basically wanting to do here is double the distance, right? So we would half the number here. So let's just go ahead here. Let's go divide that by two. Okay, so that gives us half a segment. And then we would also have this rotation. We would want to times this by two, right? Because we have half the amount, so times that by two. Okay, so now you can see every other one isn't quite there. So how would we fix this? Well, all we would do is go into edit mode, select all this here. We're gonna go and do a shift D and then we're going to just go from our 3D cursor, a rotation on the Z by, do we know the fixed amount that we need to rotate? No, we don't know that fixed amount. So what are we going to use? Use CAD transforms. So turn on CAD transforms, go R, we're going to go from the vertex, this vertex here, to that vertex there, snapping it like that. We'll select everything, merge by distance, and then let's go here by distance. We've taken out five vertices and there we go. It's our cylinder closed again. Now here's the great thing. We can now go back here. We can extrude this out here We can go ahead and extrude it once again and extrude this up once again. And that is just sort of showing you the power of what is the array modifier. The array modifier has so much use to it. It's literally, it's impossible to cover it all, but I've done my best to cover as much as I can within this video. Well done for getting through this video. Yes, it's probably one of my longest one and probably one of my most complicated, but I think you can see just quite how powerful it is to know all of these things together in one spot. A huge thanks to my patrons. You guys are absolutely awesome. And it's the reason why I'm able to create all these videos completely for free. And if you're enjoying what I'm making here and you think I'm worthy of your support, I would love to see you there too. Don't forget that we have a Discord and that's linked down in the description. Thank you for watching, keep making, and let the quest continue.